Hey, I'm Dr. Wilson. I'm a PhD molecular biologist, and uh, I'm going to be reacting to a discussion, which kind of, I guess, turned into a debate today. Anyway, this is a discussion between two anti-vaxxers, people who are, like, deep in anti-vaccine rabbit holes. Like, these people think that vaccines have killed millions of people. They're totally bonkers. But I'm told that this conversation was hilarious. I haven't seen it, but... I'm going to react to it live. We'll see if it's funny or if I can make it informative in any way. But let's let's just get going with this. This is a guy named Steve Kirsch interviewing a guy named Denis Rancourt. Again, both are crazy, but you'll you'll see that in this video. Yeah, especially, especially for the dead. For yeah. the dead. You, yeah, you got to yeah. preserve the privacy of dead people. Yeah, so that's, I, that's that's that the, the, the auditors were funded by... Okay. For context, the guy on the right here, Steve Kirsch, um, he publicized some stolen data, patient-level data, for uh, people from New Zealand. He admitted publicly that he had access to the unredacted files. He could see their person's names and everything about them. The guy is just, uh, he's a criminal. So Okay, so, so, so let me ask you. You, you left as a full professor at, at yeah. the University of Ottawa. Why did you yeah. leave? I didn't leave. I was fired. Oh, really? <laughs> I don't think that was the answer he was expecting. Oh my God, this is, this is a train wreck of an interview already. When uh, my parents couldn't give me answers to questions like, uh, how did I get here? And Oh, wow. Uh, you know, what did they say? Yeah. yeah, what did they say? How did, how did well, you get here? My mother was very religious and so she would give me well, this is I, I i'm told that there are funny parts of this interview and i i guess they're coming up but man so much of this is so boring are there any benefits from the covid vaccine do you think there are any benefits whatsoever from the covid vaccine infection hospitalization or mortality did you did you in know, your there, studies did, did, there, did you find anything yes I that shows a core a, a benefit you see Steve, there's a premise in your question that I don't agree with, okay? And the premise in your question that I don't agree with okay. is that there was out there something to get a benefit. Is he about to say that COVID doesn't exist? Oh, please let that, let that be the case. That would be hilarious. Our work has shown conclusively that there was no particularly virulent pathogen. <laughs> I don't care if it's... <laughs> what? Not. There was no particularly virulent pathogen, and right. there was nothing spreading. We can prove that there is no spread here. So there is no spreading, and the, the patterns of mortality are inconsistent at odds with the accepted theory of spread in epidemiology for a respiratory disease. And they are in, can only be explained if you acknowledge that Excess mortality occurred when you assaulted people. What? <laughs> He's saying that there was no virus. How is how is Steve going to respond? Because I I know I know that Steve has had debates on, on his on his platform with uh, people who don't think viruses exist. So the, <laughs> to claim that there's no pathogen, no virus that was spreading in at the start of 2020 that caused excess deaths is wild. <laughs> Just like fantastic. I love this. I, okay. This interview was awesome. I changed my mind. Uh, where we argued that this was a mass homicide, uh, that the peaks that were occurring, huh? the virus was waiting for the political announcement of a pandemic before it decided to kill anyone. Exactly. Absolutely nothing yeah. happening until the they declared a pandemic. Okay. So countries like, Australia and New Zealand, which locked down very hard for like all of 2020 and 2021, they didn't see excess deaths during that time. So where were all the lockdown caused excess deaths or declaration of a pandemic caused excess deaths? They didn't exist. They didn't happen until the lockdown was lifted and COVID entered the country and then caused some excess death which was drastically reduced because the population was vaccinated when the virus entered the country. But wow, 
This is wild. This is so stupid. I'm going to keep listening. I, I have to. I have to see where this goes. I have to see if Steve challenges him on whether or not SARS-CoV-2 exists and cause disease, causes disease. So we have demonstrated that there, there, is, there was nothing to be saved from other than um, the medical establishment and governments. Am I in a fever dream? Am I like in the movie Waking Life right now? What is going on? Oh, is Steve just going to agree that COVID didn't cause any deaths and it was all government? Come on, man. That's low even for you. Basically kill people with the vaccine so that you're saving them from the assaults by the government. Yes. Yeah, that may, yeah that's, that's cool. That totally awesome. That makes perfect sense. All the health insurance companies are saying like, yeah, sure. Kill our patients and make them seek medical attention and cost us money. That's fine. That's fine. We'll still charge extra to the unvaccinated because, you know, who cares? There, there are, people did get infected with COVID, right? I I don't know. I, I have no evidence of that. Oh, I do. I mean, yeah, I, I, don't, I, don't, I got infected with COVID. I, I uh, had a lateral flow assay test. I, I hope they start fighting. I just hope they just start full on fist fighting through the webcams and just like cussing each other out. That would be amazing. So the test was indicating something that was correlated with my. It was indicating something. I, look, look. I don't, I don't question that these PCR tests, as bad as they are. Well, there's not a PCR uh, test. It's a lateral flow assay test. Okay. <laughs> so what what was it measuring? And a uh, 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 presence of antigen. Okay. So. A lot of tests were approved on an emergency basis and are completely unreliable. I've written about that. <laughs> he thinks that PCR tests uh, and antigen tests uh, don't work, which antigen tests detect protein and PCR tests detect, uh, in this case, RNA. So I guess that's all fake. Oh, man, they're going to start just slapping each other, like, real hard. In so-called influenza, which... Uh, uh, they supposedly can test for can cause you to have memory loss, loss of taste, all the all the weird symptoms that people are talking about. Yeah, the the tests distinguish between influenza and SARS-CoV-2. That that that's been very conclusively demonstrated. I mean, that's not debatable. But will Steve say that? Will he say that? That is the question. Spread a viral respiratory disease. In other words, that you can cause infection in a person using a virus and i have not found any scientifically okay he's saying that there's no evidence that respiratory viruses can be transmitted wow i yikes his entire career trying to infect college age university students in the u.s when you were allowed to do that with what he thought was influenza he had you know he had cultures uh he was culturing this stuff and he would Put the the fluid either vaporize it into their into their noses or deposit it or drop it in or into their eyes into their nose every way that he could. Did and he try injecting he, it? No, and he uh, um, no, he's not. In <laughs> okay, just so you all know, there have been successful influenza challenge experiments in the past. People have successfully infected a uh, cohort of volunteers with influenza to study what the effects are this is not new <laughs> it's been done before the transmission of flu viruses from organism to organism has been demonstrated in in humans in in animal models like it's all there <laughs> but <laughs> steve is like have they injected them mm. ah there you go man it, it, it's funny how he like he has the right idea in some things, but he just is completely clueless on what the literature actually says. I hate this, and, and it's awesome at the same time. This is, this is great. The people who got sick are the ones who had uh, significant psychological stress in their life. Wow. And, and this, these were the biggest factors that determined whether or not you were going to get sick. <laughs> Steve's not pushing back as much as I had hoped he would. Maybe now he's going to be a virus denier. Maybe he'll he'll, he'll uh, go even lower. I don't know. Had a lot of military personnel, and they decided to do an experiment to see if uh, the 1918 uh, contagion would spread. 
and they couldn't get the spread. They were they were they were uh, forcing the soldiers to be in the same bunks and then sleeping side by side. And uh, you know, I, I, they may have asked them to kiss. I don't know, but they couldn't get. <laughs> Can you imagine just <laughs> a 1918 study where they're just like, okay, you two soldiers, you're sick, you're not. Now kiss. No, that didn't happen. No. So so what he's actually talking about is a, a study where uh, they could not detect symptomatic spread uh, of flu between people in a limited cohort. So what they didn't understand back then was asymptomatic infection, pre-existing immunity from an asymptomatic infection, the 2080 rule, which is a rule in epidemiology where 20% of the infected people spread 80 percent of the cases they didn't understand any of that and they were just like okay you're sick um with something we think is the 1918 flu so you go hang out with these healthy soldiers and see if they get sick it it was it wasn't very scientific which is why now i point you to more modern experiments where transmission of influenza viruses from person to person has been conclusively demonstrated. But let's see if Steve um, picks up on any of this and uh, pushes back at all. Yeah, but so, you, but you have there, 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 there are many, there are many uh, epidemiologists through, throughout the last hundred years who have written on the basis of their careers that these things don't spread. Like who? <laughs> no one credible says that. Right. Someone, someone, someone was was uh, uh, diagnosed with COVID, and right. so they they walk down the whole cruise ship, and then uh, days later, you have hundreds of people on the cruise ship that now have, uh, you know, the, they they turn positive. Oh. So how do you explain oh. that? It's not hard to explain. Yeah, you just have to oh. you just have to admit okay. that it cannot that it doesn't have to be explained by the spread hypothesis. Um, you can literally like genetically track the spread of a particular virus, like a particular variant of a virus through a population and say it started in this person and then it spread to these people and then it spread to these people and then it spread to these people. It, it's called contact tracing. Like this isn't a new concept and you can detect that spread and associate it with the emergence of disease or symptoms within that population uh and ben, i absolutely actually believe this that that there is a covid virus that has been sequenced it's a jet bank and it's unique and it's a it's a novel uh viral uh pathogen okay true uh, do you agree or, agree or disagree i i do not well let, let me put it this way i have i plan to get in there and find out exactly what they're doing okay <laughs> but in my what does that mean get in there get in where and find out what who's doing what what i'm finding is that the genetic sequencing methods are highly unreliable patchy uh fabricated uh i mean you name it so okay you, you... we have very specific genomes belonging to sars-cov-2 and other viruses that spread from person to person I love how Steve was trying to move on, and this is just becoming a bigger and bigger hole for him. <laughs> are, are they going to kiss like the 1918 soldiers, or are they just going to full-on fist bite? I'm still waiting. But getting back to my original question, do you believe that there was a novel pathogen that was introduced into the world somewhere around yeah, 2020? You know, on, on or about 2020, do you believe that a novel I, pathogen... I, at, this stage of my, at this stage of my study... <laughs> I am not at all convinced that viruses as a pandemic-causing agent exist. Just stop, Steve. Just stop. He is not going to look sane on your platform. Stop trying to save him. It's not working. So now let me give you some evidence for it, and let me see if you can go and and, uh, dispute that evidence or agree with me. Because let me see if I can change your mind, okay? I mean, I know this is hard because you're you're a smart guy, but... This is getting... It's getting hard to watch. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm having fun anymore. This is getting less awesome by the second. SPO2 measures, you know, they, they do that on the, on the finger. And is that uh, nothing to do with the viscosity of blood or something like that? Yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 What? No. 
No, that's not how pulse oximeters work. They work based on infrared light. They shine infrared light into translucent parts of your skin and then measure wavelengths that correspond to oxygenated or deoxygenated blood because oxygenated hemoglobin gives off a different wavelength than deoxygenated hemoglobin. That's how it works on a, on a basic level. I, I don't know. I don't know what, what compels people to listen to two adults who know absolutely nothing about what they're talking about to just talk for like two hours. But then I'm, I'm here watching it. So like, what am I doing? I, I don't know. Well, I'll just leave it here because suffice it to say, I totally disagree <laughs> of, of your, your assessment, but that's yeah. fine. <laughs> you, you are a totally insane man. I disagree with you on every single level of what you just said, but let's go on and talk about what we agree on. That's, that's fine. I, I, and I'm envisioning my SPO2. My SPO2 never dropped from 99% during a whole period. I'm under stress. I'm isolated. Like nobody wants to talk to me. I'm a misinformation spreader. The existence of viruses that cause disease is such an easy thing to present evidence for. And Steve is just doing such a bad job of it. He is a bad debater. He is really bad at presenting evidence for his views, man. He's... Let's not get into the specifics of this. My question is, how do we resolve these questions in the scientific community? Because there are a thousand papers that say vaccines don't cause autism, and there are a thousand papers that say they do, and the doctors are all saying, well... Oh, God. Yeah, so for those who don't know, Steve Kirsch believes that vaccines cause autism. I I've listened to like 30 minutes more of this interview, and it just, there's nothing interesting here. I am sad at how much time I've wasted listening to these two bald guys talk about how much they don't know. I'm going to give this interview a three out of 10 because I had fun with it. It was, it was pretty hilarious for certain parts. Uh, these two did not get an octagon and fist fight. So that definitely deducted some points. And then this interview gave me lupus. So I'm going to have to go deal with that. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. This was uh, certainly something, but uh, yeah, I'm going to post links to any sign as I talked about in this video in the description below. So check that out if you want to read it for yourself. And, uh, yeah, don't forget to subscribe if you want to catch me next time where I'm going to debunk some more funky stuff. See you then.